Welcome back to Mass Ships. As you know, the e-bike market is booming in US and most of the other countries too. So most of us are directly ordering an e-bike from a distributor or from a manufacturer and they're shipping to our home in a both shape. For the beginner, there is a chance to make some mistakes while you assemble your e-bike, especially if you don't have a right user manual or instruction sheet. So let us see how to assemble an e-bike and we'll see some mistakes that you probably make while you assemble your first e-bike. Let's go through that. So this box is around 62 pound net weight and gross weight is around 77 pounds and almost five feet length maybe around two and a half feet height and it's a commuter electric bike there are some fat tire electric bike that we reviewed before one from Himiway. that's more than this weight that's around 85 pounds my point is that these boats are really heavy and i wouldn't recommend to assemble this on a tabletop or any other furniture Instead of opening the box here and take all the heavy stuff from out from here, it is easy to make a cut on this border and open this way. That's easy to take out all stuff from this heavy box. So it's tightly packed without moving the stuffs and tied all together to avoid any damage while shipping. Most of the time, you will get all these items in a good shape without any damage. Usually for this e-bike, the front wheel will be a detached one and the back wheel will be already assembled to the frame, including all chain mechanism and the controllers. So you don't need to take extra effort to assemble this back wheel. And let me remove the rest of the package right from here. And now I can move this bike out from the boss to this platform and it's easy to assemble right from here. And finally, there is the battery attached to the frame and we can take out the package. And here is the battery. Most of the time, the battery percentage between 60 to 80 percentage when they ship the bike. I would recommend before you start to assemble the bike, take out the battery and connect to the charger. And when you get it full charge, you can immediately start to use. Now let us install the handlebar first. So there are four screws here that you can lose it and make sure the handlebar is inserting here in the right direction and make sure that and all cables are straight and loose enough to move. So let me attach the handlebar right here and you can adjust this angle later and put it back. Before you tighten this handlebar, you see the tiny lines here and align those lines in the exact middle of this bracket. That's where you can tighten the handlebar exactly in the middle. Before you tighten the handlebar, you can set the angle. I have seen sometimes like this, it is okay. Most of the time it's up to your comfort. Instead of that, if you are using this angle, you have to bend here like this and it is not easy to control. I would prefer always almost like a 45 degree angle. So when you sit on the bike, my fingers would be straight and easy to control. So that would be the best angle that you can set with this brake lever. So once you confirm the angle, you can tighten these four screws and make it final. Here is the quick release skewer with one side has a lever to release it. And there is a two additional springs. Those springs are in cone shape and this will go inside the four. And also the quick release lever comes to the left side of the bike while you assemble the front wheel. And when you start to fix the wheel, in this case, the disc is here. So it is easy to recognize which direction this wheel will go. But if you don't have a disc brake, on the tire, you can see an arrow direction that's indicating the rotation of the tire. So 
That's where you can easily understand the direction of the wheel that you want to fix. Now get your quick release skewer and remove this end and one spring and the lever would always come to the driver side and the other side keep these two corn springs pointed toward the wheel hub hold on the one side and tighten it you don't need to tight that much now and you will see with the spring it will gently move in both side now it's time to assemble the front fork and when you assemble the front fork make sure that the angle should be always into the front that's an another mistake that we usually do sometimes they will rotate this front fork into backwards and assemble in that way and that's perfectly wrong now this front wheel is ready to fit into the fork carefully lower the fork and ensure this brake rotor goes into the caliper and make sure the fork dropouts are fully seated on the axle now tighten the thumb nut until the quick release lever is held in line with the axle and then use your palm of your hand to close the quick lever if you feel that you can close the lever with your finger and if you can easily close it that's not enough the strength tighten it again and make sure you to close the lever with your palm that's an easy solution to know how much strength you have to apply so you have to apply that much pressure to close the lever and that's a fair tight and here is a headlight and there is a two pins here marked as plus and minus and there is a two corresponding wires are here make sure the red goes to the plus and the black goes to the minus Now let us fix this pedal. Usually the pedals will be marked for left and right. In this case it's marked as WR, R for right side. And the other one marked for WL, L for the left side. So this is an another mistake that you may have some confusion about it. The left side would be anti-clockwise all the time and the right side would be clockwise to tighten it. So first to try this left side with anti-clockwise. And slowly rotate the pedal shaft and be smooth then once you reach into that level then tighten with your French and the next one is on the right side of the driver side and that should be in clockwise to tighten it and you can see it's already marked as WR so let me try tight that one in clockwise and now the bike can stand on the kickstand if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Click on the subscribe button below and press the bell icon for more updates. When you set up the saddle, it can be a forward angle or it can be a backward angle, but there are some limitations for choosing that angle. If the nose is up, they may have more pressure at this part on your body or if the nose is down it's not a stable position while you ride the bike so we recommend to get a almost a flat surface and i see some of them they choose this nose little bit upward compared to the back part while you fix your saddle and that might be a more comfortable way to set your saddle we will see how much the angle would be ideal in this case and this is the final angle i set for this special bike the nose part is almost six degree up compared to the base part some of them i see that their preference is to get a perfectly flat saddle rather than in an angled way so you can go for that or personally i choose a slight variation in the nose part and I want to be get that one a little bit upper compared to the base part and you can see here the height difference between the nose and the base is almost one finger thickness so that's a basic difference between this saddle angle so now we have fixed the saddle angle and let us see how to adjust the height of the saddle you know this one is comes with a quick release button here so you can adjust the height of the saddle based on your height. When you ride the bike with this saddle height, you can see the angle of your leg and it is not a healthy way to set the height. So you have to find out a right height for your saddle based on your height. So whenever you adjust the height, keep your pedal at the seven o'clock position and your heel on the pedal and your leg should be straight in that position. So that's the ideal height you have to pick for your saddle. 
when they ship the bike, they will keep the tire pressure very low to avoid any damage. Before you ride the bike, make sure that both the tires have enough air pressure. So this particular one rated for 30 PSI minimum tire pressure and 55 PSI maximum tire pressure. And it depends on the ride and the road that you are choosing for this bike. So I'm going to do around 45 PSI for this tire. I'm using an electrical pump that's powered with a rechargeable battery from Basis. And it's pretty good and handy. So I usually use this device for my car and the bike. And now turn on. Now showing the actual tire pressure. And you can set a different mode. This one for 45 PSI, that's set for the bike. Press again to start pumping. And the pressure pump will automatically stop when it's reached to that set pressure. Now we are ready with both tires with enough pressure. So the e-bike comes with the three different drives. It might be a front wheel drive or mid drive usually will be here or the rear drive that will be attached to the back wheel. The e-bike have a separate controller here and the main unit battery comes here. They should have a bunch of cables going through this direction underneath the frame. So whenever you drive, make sure that this part is not hitting on the bottom at any condition, any rock or anywhere. If you hit this cable part, the circuitry may not work properly. Now the assembly part is over, let me clean this stuff. We almost complete the assembly of this e-bike. And before you do further, make sure the chain and the gear is working fine and move your gear into the different levels and make sure everything is working fine. Remember, the battery is one of the heaviest part in an e-bike and you have to give a good care for that. Don't drop the battery on the floor. Keep away from the water or rain or any other excessive heat for long life. Now it's the time to attach the battery and here is a battery terminal that goes to the bike. So let me fix this battery. Usually most of the e-bikes comes with an LCD panel that has some information like battery charge and the odometer here. So before you start riding, make sure you attach this air tag with your e-bike. And this will only work if you have an iPhone and the community that you are living is more dominant to Apple products. Because this one is communicating through the nearby Apple devices to send its location. And finally, you can get the location information on your iPhone. So if you are living in a more Android dominant community, this may not be worth. But definitely, if you are in the US and they have a lot of iPhone users in surrounding that area, this air tag would be the wonderful device and cheaper one to track your e-bike. This one does have one year battery life and there is an internal speaker. So before you hide this one on your e-bike, make sure that you remove the internal speaker of the air tag. If you don't know how to remove the speaker, you can check the above link and we already published a video to remove the speaker from an air tag. Probably you can hide this air tag underneath the saddle and the problem that if somebody remove the saddle, you will lose tracking. Or I see another best place is just underneath here. I see it's almost going inside. So you can use a tape and probably attach this air tag over there. So either way, it's a matter of hiding this one most efficient way so nobody can see that. Thank you for watching this video and if you are looking for more accessories for your e-bike, check the link that we listed a couple of accessories that's going to be very useful for your e-bike. And also we have reviewed a couple of e-bikes before. If you are in a market you're looking for a best e-bike, you can check those links for the e-bike reviews. And thank you for watching this video and if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on the bell icon. We'll come back soon.